Let's go. Teacher Pricks, how can I be more confident? How can I become a confident English speaker and finally talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime in English? Well, watch this lesson to find out. Hey there, I'm Teacher Pricks and I'm going to help you talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime in English. Make sure to subscribe to my channel because every week I post different kinds of English lessons to help you become a better and more confident English speaker. Yes, that's my goal. And if you have already, if you have already subscribed, thank you so much. Make sure to hit the like button. And now let's get down to business. How to become a confident English speaker. Guys, here on my channel, I help pre-intermediate and intermediate students to go from stuck to speaking in six months. And guys, this is what I like to call the transition level. And here is something you need to understand. Mark my words. You could be the best English speaker. You could have the most amazing speaking skills. However, if you don't work on your confidence, on your emotional intelligence, you will not be able to use the English you have. Teacher, are you serious? I don't believe you. Well, I have worked with different people from all over the world for the past 16, 17 years of my life, and I have helped students who were really good, but they weren't confident. So it doesn't matter if your English is awesome. If you don't work on, on your confidence, when it's time to speak, your mind will go blank. So we need to work on your emotions as well. So in this lesson, I want to give you some tips. This is something that I am constantly working with my students from my academy. By the way, the registration is open. I close it tomorrow. I don't know when you're watching this video. <laughs> but anyway, with my babies, I call my students babies, BSA. I give them mind exercises to work on their confidence level, to help them manage their emotions. Because confidence is, is really connected to your emotional state. So you need to master your emotions. We're not robots. We don't control every feeling we have. I understand that. But there are tools, there are techniques that we can use to better manage our emotions. And that's what I bring my students in addition to the lessons and the activities, the English activities they need to do. Not to mention that because of the method they follow in my program, they are able to improve their English. So improving your English will also boost your confidence, okay? So with my babies, I work on, on both aspects. We learn how to manage emotions, but we also have, they also have a method that will help them improve their English skills, which in turn will help them boost their confidence level. I get messages from my students all the time. Teacher, I talked to my boss in English and he uh, praised my, my improvement. He noticed that I'm getting better. Teacher, I went to church and I spoke in English and people understood me and they were happy to hear me. I'm always getting messages like this. Teacher, I watched a movie and I understood because of your lessons. So you're building your confidence. That's what I do with my babies inside the academy. And I will give you some tips today. So first one. Confidence starts with your body language when speaking English. Yes, not just body language, but also your voice. And for the babies who joined on Sunday, for the new students who joined on Sunday, because I opened registration this week, they will have a specific lecture about how to impress and influence people, the seven golden rules of communication. And I talk a lot about that there. Here I'll talk a little, okay? But this is important. Your confidence starts with your image and you could have the best English, but if every time someone wants to talk to you, you're like protecting yourself because this is the protection pose. You know, you're protecting yourself because you're afraid, which is normal. Everybody feels fear. I'm not saying, oh, you're going to become Wonder Woman. You're going to become Superman. No, we wish, but we better manage emotions. So you need to become more aware of your body language because your body language will communicate first. 
and every word that comes out of your mouth after the person in front of you looks at you will determine whether you get the job or not. So just like me, I went to Harvard. I studied professional communication at Harvard. But if I don't present my body language as someone who can talk to anyone anywhere, anytime, I will not get clients. I will not get students. I will not convince the person in front of me that I am who I say I am. So your posture, even if you make mistakes, mark my words, I have helped people who had not such a good English. But because of their posture, because of their, uh, uh, their power in their voice, they were so intense and so on point, they got things done. People respected them. People admired them because the fluency started here in what they saw in front of them, in what they hear, the, the way you use your voice. Sometimes the students who are afraid to speak English, they tend to to eat the voice, you know, it, it, it stays inside. Yeah, I... The, the, the voice even changes, the tone of voice even changes. Uh, well, um, um, I don't know. Um, uh, it, it gets more childlike because you're afraid. So work on that. I don't speak the best Italian. I study Italian by myself, following my method, by the way. And I know I don't speak the best Italian. I make mistakes, just like many other students. But when I am speaking Italian, I put a smile on my face. You know, I, I use intonation. I use a lot of energy. And I always get compliments when I talk to people and I speak a little bit of Italian in front of them and I say something and I explain something. Why? Because your confidence it starts in what you show and how you put the words out, okay? Of course, you will need to work on grammar, vocabulary. You will need to work on all of that. But the lesson here today is how to become a confident English speaker. Well, you start on the outside. Pay attention to the way you behave when you're making a presentation. You're making a presentation at work. There's a slideshow. Um, okay, so first slide. So this week, the company made some sales. You don't look at the person you're talking to. How do you show confidence and power if you don't look at them in the eyes? You're having a job interview and you look down every time you have to speak English or you look away or you avoid eye contact. How do you expect to show you're confident? You're showing the exact opposite. You need to speak with certainty even if you make the mistakes, because the mistakes will not speak as loudly as your lack of connection. And nowadays, it is so, it's so difficult for people to connect because they are living in a world where, I will do this right now, that if I don't, I don't feel comfortable, I turn off the camera. Please, camera, come back. I turn off the camera. I am in a meeting. I turn off the camera. I don't need to be there. So it's easy for people to, to escape, you know, they send a voice message or they send a text message. So it's getting more difficult for people to work on the most basic exercises that will help them boost their confidence. So this is something that you need to pay attention. And it's one of the most important lessons, things that I always talk to my students about. Okay, let's keep rolling. Nurture a growth mindset. Now, in a growth mindset, people believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Brain and talent are just the starting point. Some people have more talent than you. Yes, I agree with you. Some people will be more talented than you. But that is only the starting point. Ah, this is the growth mindset. Oh, there are better people than me. Yes, there are. But this is just a starting point. They have more talent. Okay, so I'm going to do my, 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 I will level that with my dedication and hard work. So this is the, the, the growth mindset. And building your confidence will require nurturing a growth mindset. And this is the exact opposite that I witness on the internet nowadays. 
I read your comments. I may not reply, but I read your comments. I read your messages. That's why I create these lessons. And most of the time, I will see comments like, well, teacher, English is easy for you, but not for me. You don't know my story. Oh, teacher, it's impossible for me. My comprehension is awful. Uh, teacher, well, uh, it's easier for my friends, but me, I forget the words all the time. I can't improve vocabulary. It's so confusing. It's so hard. It's so this, it's so that. I read this on a regular basis. And this is the opposite of a growth mindset. Yesterday, I was doing a live lesson and I forgot something. And then I said, I will remember next time. I forgot it, but I will remember next time. Why? Because I have a growth mindset. So I believe that I have the skill to remember the next time. I will do the hard work. I will dedicate myself. That's the growth mindset. When I was studying English, when I started my journey, I met people who were way better than me, but I beat them with my hard work and dedication. That is the most important thing you can possibly have. And this is something that you can work on. Will people be born with um, uh, an ability to learn languages, a, a special talent to learn languages? It's possible, yes. But that's the starting point. If you don't exercise that, if you don't work and dedicate yourself, you will be stuck. Same thing here. When I started my journey, I sucked. Okay? When I started learning English, I was awful. You know? I remember the first time that... <laughs> I'll never forget that. I, I brought my notebook to show my father that I had written the things in English that I learned. And then the first thing my father said, just to show like, wow, Priscilla, this is a new low for me. I'm, I'm Brazilian. Okay, I'm from Brazil. And then the first thing that I wrote on top of the page was aula de inglês. That's, that's how I wrote it. And then my father looked at the notebook and he said, well, my daughter, I love you, but you got to start learning Portuguese first because you can't even write English in Portuguese well. Imagine English in English. <laughs> My father, he didn't have a filter, so he said what he wanted to say. <laughs> but it made me stronger, I must admit. So he made fun, but he, he taught me an important lesson, okay? I may not be the best, but there is one, one thing that I always beat people around me. Man, I am resilient. So I took that feedback from my father and I was like, oh my God, I need to pay attention. I need to work hard. I need to dedicate myself. Otherwise, I will not get better. So if that's you, you don't have a special talent. Not many people do, guys. A very, very small percentage in the world is, very, is born with a special talent. This doesn't exist, okay? It is such a small percentage. So comparing yourself to someone uh, who was born with a special skill is so unfair, so unfair. You don't need special talents to learn a language, to improve your communication skills. Because if I depended on a special talent, I would not be here. Because when I started, I sucked. My listening was terrible. I didn't understand anything. I, after a year of study, one year of study, I stopped because I didn't understand. But then when I started again, I decided to start again, I developed a growth mindset. I will beat the odds. I will work hard. I will dedicate myself and I will freaking learn English. That was what I did differently. And that's what I recommend you start paying attention. Okay. Start changing the way you talk to your mindset, okay? That's change your mindset. And then you will have a, a, a complete transformation on your journey. You will feel more confident. Maybe you don't like me so well, but I bet that you're watching this lesson and you, the, your first reaction is, well, that girl, that woman is confident. Because I am. When it comes to conversation and speaking and helping people learn, man, I master it, okay? I definitely do. Now, 
Understand the true meaning of being a fluent speaker. Yeah. Fluency is communication, my friends, not perfection. And waiting for the day when you will finally know all the words and never make mistakes won't come. This will only hurt your confidence. So when you are creating this, oh my God, being fluent. Wow, this is going to happen. So be careful, okay? So waiting for perfection is only going to hurt your confidence. And I know that because at the early on on my journey, this was a problem to me because I am a perfectionist. So I am constantly working on managing my emotions, my expectations, because this is a characteristic that I have. Not proud of it, but I am aware. I understand that I, I have a perfectionism tendency. So I work on this. And at the beginning of my journey, I was so hard on myself because I had this idealization of fluency that never happened. So watch out, even to this day, most of the comments I get here are amazing, positive, you know, that will complement people's experiences. But sometimes some people come here to try to bring me down and they, they say the most awful things. So imagine if I based my confidence on what people say about me on the internet, man, I would be screwed, okay? Now, if you're enjoying this lesson, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, get my study plan cycle. It is amazing. My academy is open right now. So, of course, I recommend my academy. Okay, uh, definitely. But if the academy is closed, the registration is closed, I don't know when you're watching this video, then the second best thing I recommend is my study plan cycle. Okay, but if in case you are wondering about joining my academy, I can leave the description here in the comments, in the chat, okay? But other than that, my friends, let's keep rolling because I have a lot to say. <laughs> Don't set unrealistic goals, okay? This is connected to the previous one, to understanding the true meaning of being a fluent speaker. Because when you understand what fluency is, you stop the idealization of, oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to talk like those rappers. You're not going to talk like them. You're not. Okay. So realistic goes. I always tell my students in my academy, I help students go from stuck to speaking in six months. Some people get angry at me. They're like, oh, it's impossible. No, it's not. I said stuck to speaking. I didn't say from stuck to perfect, from stuck to native. So I said realistic goals. I help pre-intermediate and intermediate speakers, not beginners from zero. So I am very realistic with the things I offer my students. So when you understand what fluency is, it's easier to establish goals that you can achieve. Speaking clearly, expressing your ideas, feelings, and dreams, using your vocabulary in your favor. Another problem students have, oh, because when I have more vocabulary, I'll be able to speak. We speak today with the vocabulary you have. Start working around what you know and gradually build your vocabulary. I'm not saying you will stop and not study vocabulary anymore. Of course, you will continue. But use what you have and expand. That's the mentality you should develop and not have the fixed mentality. Oh, I don't have. That's why. Well, work with what you got and expand. Okay? So, practicing your ability to describe what you don't know. This is basically what fluent speakers do all the time. I don't know how to say something. I explain what it is. That's how you, that's what your mentality should be like. Oh, I don't know. Well, I will use my English to explain what it is. And there you go. And finally, collect small victories. Do not expect big wins at your level. Do not. Okay. The big wins probably happened to you when you were a beginner because you learned a lot of information and you felt the difference. Now that you are at a pre-intermediate or intermediate level, the changes will be different. You have to collect small victories. Otherwise, you will never build up your confidence if you're waiting for something huge to happen at a pre-intermediate or intermediate level. 
So celebrate the small victories. This is what is going to make you more confident. So you remember the word, you were having a conversation and you remembered something. Celebrate, okay? You explain something basic to a colleague in English. Celebrate. You learned a new and fun expression. Celebrate. And every time you recognize something different, something you did well, even if it's small, celebrate. Show your brain, signal to your brain that, hey, that's good. You're making progress, girl. I always say that to myself in English or in Italian. I did something nice. Oh, hey, nice. Good job. You're learning. What am I doing? I'm doing what your parents did to you when you were a child. When you did something really stupid as a child, like, oh, you did, you gave this to mommy. Oh, congratulations. You are learning. Good job. But as we grow up, we stop celebrating small things. We're always expecting the big ones. So you learn something, a cool expression, celebrate. You remember a new word, celebrate. Otherwise, you will be stuck, okay? So in this case, have the attitude that a child has. You know, they learn how to do something. They're happy. They're excited. They can't stop talking about it, you know? I remember I was a babysitter in the United States. And I remember this girl uh, that, that I took care of. Her name was Mitchell. And uh, she often heard her father talking about Cincinnati, a city she, that she, he went to. And then she learned the word Cincinnati. She wouldn't stop saying it and joking about it. She would come to me and say, Priscilla, I'm leaving. I'm going to Cincinnati. Bye. <laughs> so have this attitude. You learn something. Play about it. Be playful. Light about your journey. If, you, if you're always tense, you're not going to build your confidence, okay? Celebrate. Now, guys, Finally, fluence is about a journey, not a final destination. It is the process of studying that will make you confident, not a, speak, not a specific moment in a far future alternative reality in which you're finally there. Understand there's no there. There. No, there's no there. There's only here. There's only now. Be present now. Be present here. Each day you are better than the day before because the, the there doesn't exist. Only the present is possible. So celebrate the process you're going through today if you want to unlock your fluency because fluency is not something that, okay, got it, like a phone. I bought the phone. I have the phone. That's not what fluency is. It's not so tangible. It's the process of being fluent like you talked to someone today, then you had a, you watched a movie and you understood, then you used a cool expression. This is the process. And when you begin to celebrate it and understand that there's no end, I'm still working on my English. I sometimes watch my lessons and I think, hey, I, I need to work on this. Oh, I need to improve that. Why? Because there's only today, there's no there, only here only now. And when you begin to understand these points that, I've, that I made in this lesson, then your confidence level boom, skyrockets. And that's what I want for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, share this lesson with someone. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.